Okay, now that we're acquainted with a dot product, uh, the next step is to see how the dot product looks in um, coordinates when we try to express vectors in um, components using the Cartesian coordinate system and that's what I want to do now. So um, first of all we're going to need a little uh, claim, a little easy auxiliary claim and the claim is going to be the following. So d I hope you remember what these guys are. Remember the unit vectors in the direction of the axes and the claim is the following that if you do i dot i and whenever I do i dot i, I just cannot resist doing this. <laughs> but that's not what I, that's not the claim. Anyway, um, so what is i dot i? Think for a minute. Okay, so let's let's add a few things. So it's the same as j dot j, and it's the same as k dot k. And the claim is that they're all equal to just one. This is the scalar one. Remember that a dot product of two vectors is a scalar product. The result is a scalar. And why is this uh, true? Because recall what the dot product is. The dot product of two vectors is the length of one times the length of the other times the cosine of the angle between them. Now what's the angle between a vector and itself? zero. What's the cosine of a zero angle? One. So, and what, what's the length of a unit vector? One. So this is, the, this, okay, so let's write proof. In fact, for any, for any, you know this symbol, right? For any uh, unit vector a, a dot a equals one, since a dot a by definition is the length of a times the length of a times cosine of zero because that's the angle between a and itself. This is one because it's a unit vector. This is one because it's a unit vector. This is one because it's cosine of zero and that's the proof. Clear? Good? Okay, so um, part two of the same claim but now that I inserted the proof in the middle, I'll just write it an, as another claim. A claim is just a different word for a theorem. Okay, there are many words for theorems. The, 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 the fancy um, big word is a theorem, but you, you'll sometimes see claim or proposition or lemma. They're all words for the same thing that kind of have size um, implicit in them. So a claim, you you wouldn't call this a theorem, that's paying too much respect to it. So you call it a claim or a lemma, which is kind of a small theorem. Okay, so the other claim is, what is i dot j? Right, so, and same goes for j dot k, and same goes for k dot i, and they're all just zero, and the reason is i dot j, these two vectors are perpendicular, right? They're in the direction of the axes. So the angle between them is 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So the proof is cosine of 90 degrees equals zero, and that's what's going to show up when we write what the dot product is. Clear? Good? Everybody? Okay, so let's put a little Halmash here. Remember this thing, right? And, by the way, what is j dot i? Okay, you can say that it's zero for the same reason, because you're going to multiply two vectors that are perpendicular, or you can say that j dot i is the same as i dot j. That was a, a proposition or a property or whatever we called it last time, right? So this is of course true and we reverse the order as well. Okay, and here comes what we're going to call the theorem for, for this little topic. And it's the following. So let a be a vector and I'm going to express it coordinate-wise. Okay, so I'm going to write it 
as a1 in the i direction plus a2 in the j direction plus a3 in the k direction. And I'm going to take another dude. b is going to be b1 in the i direction plus b2 in the j direction plus b3 in the k direction. And we know that any vector, three-dimensional in particular, but one can extend this to other um, dimensions, but we're dealing with three or two. So any vector can be expressed as, uh, remember what we called this, what the formal word was? Linear combination, okay, as a linear combination of i, j, and k, okay? So what is going to be, so here's, here's the, what the theorem says, then a dot b expressed in terms of the coordinates is nothing other than a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. So it's very easy to, to do the dot product in coordinates. And this is a theorem, we want to prove it. So what is the proof? Why is this true? It's going to follow from properties of the dot product and from the little two claims that we just showed. So here goes. So I'm going to write a dot b. And I'm going to replace a with this thing and replace b with this thing because that's what they are. So it's a1i plus a2j plus a3k dot b1i plus b2j plus b3k, right? Now, we already know properties of the dot product. In particular, we know the, the um, distributive property. So when I multiply a the sum of two vectors times another vector, dot product, it's this one times this one plus this one times this one, right? That was the distributivity. And it, of course, extends to uh, a triple, a sum of three vectors, times a sum of three vectors. I just have, just like I multiply polynomials, for example, each little guy here is going to meet each little guy there, right? And what am I going to get? So let's see. So I'm going to get a1, b1, i dot i. That's from this meeting this. Do you agree? Plus. And now a1 is going to meet b2. So I get a1, b2, i dot j. Good? Plus a1, b3, i dot k plus how many components are there going to be all together how many terms nine exactly do I really want to spell all of them out yeah a2 b1 but I'm gonna get sloppy because I want to do it quickly j dot i plus a2 b2 j dot j plus a2 b3 j dot k plus a3, b1, uh, what's it going to be, k dot i, plus a3, b2, k dot j, plus a3, b3, k dot k. Do you agree? Everybody? Okay, and now using the, the previous uh, uh, little claims, all the ones that have different unit vectors in them, since they're perpendicular, are going to cancel out. So this is 0, 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 and this is 0. Do you agree? And the remaining three terms, i dot i, j dot j, and k dot k, are ones. So what I'm left with is what I claimed. a1, b1, plus a2, b2, plus a3, b3. Good? Easy. Straightforward. This is, this is a sort of proof that's called straightforward. I'm not 
pulling any rabbits out of my hat or out of my sleeve or any theorems or any... Just moving along. It leads its own way. Good? Clear? Okay. So now we know how to do the dot product in components. Um, before we move on to the uh, next product that we want to discuss, I just want to show you one, one little thing. Um, so this, this is kind of an anecdote. It's not, it's not a, something in the main line of our discussion. But remember we mentioned the, the law of cosines and we used it to, to find the length of a uh, sum of two vectors? I want to show you, so this is really an anecdote, proof of the law of cosines using the dot product. Just because it's cool and we want to do cool things to have fun. So what, what did the law of cosine says? It, it said take a triangle, any triangle, no, I don't want it to be a right angle triangle because it's not. So here's a triangle that's not a right angle triangle. Okay, and take the angle here, call it theta, and then call these, I, I, I'm going to give them specific names in a minute, but then you know that the length of this one is the root, sorry, yeah, the length of this one is the root of the length of this one squared plus the length of this one squared, that's Pythagoras, minus two times this times this times cosine of this. Remember? That was the law of cosines. So I want to prove it using vectors. So here's my triangle. I'm going to call, I'm going to think of this one as a vector and call it A. And I'm going to think of this one as a vector and call it B, and then theta is just the angle between them, right? And then this guy here, which I'm also going to think of as a vector, and I'm going to call it, well, C, but what is it in terms of A and B? Well, if you think for a minute, B plus C equals A, right? B plus C is A, so C is A minus B. Do you agree? Okay. And what I want to do now is calculate the length of C. Well, actually, I'm going to calculate the length of C squared, and at the end, we're going to take roots. Okay. So what is C squared? C squared is A minus B dot a minus b. Why is that true? Well, c is a minus b, and one of the properties that we had was that if you take the length of a vector squared, it's like dotting it with itself. Remember that property? Okay, it's easy to prove, because this times this is the length of this times the length of this times 1, cosine the angle between them. So it's c squared. Do you agree? Everybody? Okay. And what is this? So now again, I'm going to use this distributive property, okay, and have each one meet the other. So I have what? I have a dot a, a dot a from here, minus b dot a, minus a dot b, minus minus, which is plus b dot b. Do you agree? Good. Okay. Now using the same little property that we used, maybe I'll remind you of it. So, so um, let's write it here. We know already that C, for any C, C squared is the same as C dot itself. Okay, this is a property that we discussed. So, What's a dot a? It's the length of a squared. b dot a and a dot b are the same. We know commutativity for the dot product. So it's minus 2 times a dot b plus 
b dot b is b squared. Good? And finally, the last step, I'm going to replace a dot b with what I know it is. So, by definition. So it's a squared from here plus b squared from there minus 2 times a b cosine of theta. That's the definition of the dot product. Do you agree? Good. And now take roots, ignore all the middle part, look at this equals this, take square roots, and there you have the, the um, law of cosines, or actually you can write the law of cosines like this just as well. Clear? Okay, good. So this wraps up our discussion of the dot product. You still, of course, need to practice stuff and, and get used to it and to using it. Am I in your way? Sorry. And um, next, the crossed product, which is a, yet another sort of multiplication of vectors. That's coming up next.